Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Greatest Book Never Published, the podcast where we read The Greatest Book Never Published. Um, I'm Nim. I'm Nate. And I'm Steve. And yeah, we're back into it. So basically, in this podcast, um, we're reading a book that I wrote when I was like 13 and uh, having a good old time reading it. So um, yeah, if you haven't listened to the other episodes... Go back and listen to those first because, you know, otherwise you'll, you'll be lost. You won't know what's going on. So anyways, let's jump right into it. So uh, what happened last? Um, let's see. I don't remember. I guess, I think, I think, I don't remember everything that happened last, but basically they, the gang got back together. Um, they, the dude, the scientist dude escaped, mm-hmm. but they stopped him from getting their DNA. So, I, but he did have the gun thing yeah. that could k- kill them. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. This scientist had a lot of tech that was like advanced, very and stuff. advanced. But mm-hmm. uh, anyways, what was his name? Doctor Ulrich. CIA. Ulrich. Yeah. Or Ulrich. Ulrich. I don't know how you Ulrich. Uh, but anyways, so team is finally back together for the first time in like a while. Oh, wrong one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The team is finally back together, everyone. We can be, you know, where they're, they're all safely together, and it's, it's a great time. So, um, chapter 65, Stephen Richards. Now that we are finally all here, I can tell you what exactly is going on, Adam Fox says, as he, Mr. Black, Zach Jameson, Nate, Abigail, and I stand in the middle of the football field. Last, so they're just going to hang out at the football field to plan their next move. Why not? Mm-hmm. I guess they're already there. Last summer, John Thompson was doing research on the substance we all know as the infection. Once he figured out what it could do... <clears throat> whoa. Once he figured out what it could do, he created the SIBs, super infection bombs. Why did John Thompson create bombs out of it? That's kind of sketch. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. not gonna lie. This is a little bit sketch. Yeah, like, he's supposed to be the guy who's gonna use the power for good. So really, it's his like, fault that this bombs. exists, because he created Sims I know. out of it. Um, huh. He was going to drop one of these bombs on an unpopulated island so he could study the effects it had on a whole ecosystem. So he's just gonna frick up a whole island's ecosystem and animals? Like, just mutate a bunch of animals? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he already saw what it did to Shredder. That means like, yeah, we'll just do that to a whole island. Yeah, that would be pretty epic to see, actually. Um, the launch codes for the SIBs were hidden on a computer chip. Mr. Black here was sent on a mission in London. He was to give the chip to Clara Red. Okay, so that's what we got in the pre- in the prologue. Mm-hmm. Our best British agent. She was to keep it safe. The mission went bad. Red was captured along with the chip. Snake had one problem though the only way they could launch the sibs was if they had john thompson's fingerprint we knew that they would be looking for him that is why we moved him to new york we could keep him safe here <coughs> but apparently it didn't not. work <laughs> <laughs> yeah apparently not so much <laughs> so so the that chapter that like opening um the prologue actually probably happened like a few months ago because it's, yeah. He said that's why they moved him to New York. Yeah. So that they, because they knew they were going to be after him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Looking for him. So that is why we moved him to New York. We could keep him safe here, but they still got to him. So now we believe they already have the SIBs ready to go. We fear that they will be launched soon. That is where you guys come in. I have a plan to help us stop this whole operation. What's your plan? I say, uh, who's this? Oh, Steve Steve. Richards, yeah. Sometimes I forget who's talking in each chapter. And why do you need us? Let me explain, Fox says. When John created these plans, there was one thing he told me. He said there was only one other person whose fingerprint was programmed into the system. Who? Jameson. (laughs) Nate asks. You, Nathan. Uh, (gasps) Fox answers. Why did he do that? Because <laughs> why not? You never need, never know if you need a failsafe. I mean, yeah. yeah, but like, why specifically Nathan? I don't know. None of the other brothers. I guess it does. does a, Turns like out Nathan Nathan's best. actually his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew that until now. 
He said that your fingerprints were the only other ones programmed into the system. You're the only one who has the ability to shut down the sibs, besides John himself. Um, wait a minute, Zach says. If these sibs were dropped on a large population, what exactly would happen? The same thing that happened to you. The people would all have superhuman abilities. There's only one difference. Snake has implanted some kind of mind control device in with it. Ooh. Oh my. I don't know how that works. Like, it, it just explodes and, like, somehow attaches mind control well, devices to everybody book. in the explosion. It's a, it's a fictional book. So. I know. It's just funny. There's only one, Snake has implanted mind control device. Uh, they will be able to control the minds of all the people who are affected by this. Snake will have a whole army of superhumans. <gasps> yeah, that's, well, that's, that's not good. terrifying. Oh, no. So, what exactly is the plan? Nate says. Nathan will get captured. Fox says, oh, yeah, that's always a good thing. He's, He's going like, to do again? <laughs> I've already been captured time twice. This book? Third time this book? Uh, wait, what? Nate says, I got captured once, escaped, got captured again, escaped, and now you want me to get captured again? <laughs> yeah, so you and Nate's like, what the heck? <laughs> it's the only way to get inside of the hovercraft, Fox says. You will have a tracking device on you so we can find out where it is. It's not, I mean, that's not a bad plan, I guess. Don't you? Don't worry. You will be saved. You'll be captured with three men. One of those men is Mr. Black. Two other men come walking out. Agent Scope. Fox points to a man standing on the left. He is a short, brown-haired man wearing a black suit and bow tie. He is our best sniper. He'll be there to watch your back. Also, Could Agent... guessed. <laughs> oh, Agent Scope is a sniper? What? <laughs> I know. Also, Agent Eagle. Fox points to a tall, brown-haired man with a lot of facial hair. He is wearing blue jeans and a black t-shirt with a brown leather jacket over it. He is our best pilot <laughs> and driver. He will be there to fly your escape. You four will get captured. Zach, Jameson, and Steve will be sent up there once we find out where the base is. They will retrieve the computer with the launch codes on it. They will then break you three out. Nate will shut down the missiles. You three and Mr. Black will escape in one of their jets as the hooded three try to take down the hovercraft and find John. Sound simple enough? Yeah, Abigail says, but could I get captured with them? <laughs> I would like to be part of this mission. <laughs> she just wants to spend time with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Fox says, you can get captured with them. <laughs> oh, just, <laughs> sure, why not? What does Nate think of this? And Nate's like, um, what? <laughs> I don't know. No, oh, she. What was her agent? Oh, she was Agent Mouse. I remember. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're real uh, uh, clever with their uh, agent names. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, think of this as your first official mission. Now let's do this. Wait, I say to Fox as all the others leave. Do any of them know who my real father is? Only John, Mr. Black, and I do. Fox answers. Why do you ask? Well, I didn't want to be the one to tell them. I especially want to tell my sister. Oh, <gasps> oh my gosh. So, it, it still feels like a pointless plot point. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right yeah. one. Um, I won't tell anyone. It is something you should let people know when you want them to know. Thanks, I say as I follow the others. You know, maybe Fox is a good person after all. At first, he seemed like a cold, heartless man who only wanted to stop Snake. Now he's starting to seem more and more like he really cares about people. Yeah, he's just, you know, <clears throat> he just appears, you know, mm -hmm. stoic and all that, but he's but he, deep down. He's, he's the Nick soft, Fury of uh, this world. Yeah, yeah. right. <clears throat> uh, I mean, pretty much. Yeah, that's... And, and, and um, um, Shadow is the shield of this world. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, that was the end of that chapter. So... We got on to the next one, Chapter 66, Nathan Thompson. So maybe this will be when the this plan actually starts. So this is kind of like officially like final act, climax territory. So that's okay. exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 66, Nathan Thompson. Mr. Black, Agent Scope, Agent Eagle, Abigail, and I sit in the middle of the football field after everyone else left, hoping that some of the Snake's men will come back to see the damage done on their base. Oh, so that's their plan to get captured. Just stand there and wait. 
Are you sure they'll come? Abigail asks Mr. Black. Yes, Mr. Black says. They had a tracking device on the suitcase that had their research in it. That tracking device is in my pocket. No doubt they will want their research back, which is actually destroyed. Oh, Abigail says. How long do you think it'll take? Patience is a virtue, Mr. Black says. A virtue that you obviously Ooh. don't have, Agent Mouse. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Burn. Burn. <laughs> Abigail just stops talking, probably because she realizes that Mr. Black doesn't answer her questions the way she'd expect. <laughs> he answers them by roasting her. <clears throat> Dude. <laughs> You can read minds, right? Eagle whispers to me. Yeah, I say. Then why don't you find out something about Mr. Black? Eagle whispers back. We have tried for years to learn more about him. So far, nothing. He's just one big mystery. I guess I could try, I say. I then focus on Mr. Black's mind. Oh, I thought he wasn't going to read people's minds. Without no, he wasn't going to read Abigail's. Oh, Abigail's. Mind. That's right. Yeah. Without her permission. Yeah, that's how he blackmailed her into giving him the information he wanted, right? <laughs> Because he's... He's yeah. like... He's like, I won't read your mind without your permission. But if you'll give me the information I want, then I'm going to read it anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or like... Yeah, yeah. All I see is darkness. As if he's somehow blocking me out. Does he have something to hide? Or does he just like to keep his thoughts private? I'm not quite sure which one. So Mr. Black, it can actually block his thoughts. It block well, his... Well, he's like brain. the super ninja... Yeah, he's something. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um... Well, it, it, Mr. Black's uh, thoughts are black. Notice that? Wow. Nothing but darkness. Um, yeah, I mean, and I guess, like, technically Nate is still new to his powers, so maybe, like, the more advanced he's at it, he might be able to, like, you know, maybe. combat that. But um, Or does he just like to keep his thoughts private? I'm not quite sure which one. My concentration is suddenly broken when I realize Mr. Black is staring at me. He knows that I try to to hear his thoughts. Dude, this guy's like freaking He's like I don't know. he's like sitting there trying to think and he can't he can't get his thoughts and all of a sudden Mr. Black just like talks to him through through his mind. Stop trying to read my thoughts. <laughs> what the heck? <sighs> we both look at each other for a few seconds when suddenly we hear a door open. We look over and see about ten men with guns come walking into the football stadium. We're here, Mr. Black says as he stands with his arms raised in the air. We all stand up behind him. <laughs> Don't shoot. <laughs> Make it completely obvious. <laughs> We're here. We're here. Come capture us. Oh, no. Oh, no, no you no. got us. Oh, man. <laughs> Darn was, it. We're not even going to try to fight. Is this Ernie and Bernie or whatever the two guys' names were? What were oh, my gosh. Ernie and Bernie. Maybe. <laughs> no, it was... Um, what were their names? Uh, Frank and... Frank and... Frank and Derek. Frank uh, and Derek. Derek. Yeah. This is Frank. Maybe. Well, there's ten guys, so maybe it's Frank and Derek, and then some of their goons, some of their buddies, mm -hmm. some of their drinking buddies. <laughs> the men quickly surround. Oh, don't shoot! We have realized that we are outnumbered and are turning ourselves in. The men quickly surround us. The leader, a tall, bald man, steps forward. He's always Who are bald. You? He asks. Well, yeah, it's one of. It's probably one of the guards from the beginning. Actually, do you think those two guards from the that the from the prologue were actually Frank and Frank Derek. and Derek. They Probably. might be. Because did it ever say were... that Frank and Derek had hair? I don't know if it did. I don't know. So they could be bald. Unless it mentioned one time that they had hair. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe maybe if they did maybe if it did that they were just wearing wigs. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't think it... So I'm just gonna assume this is like Frank or Derek, you know. Yeah. We are <laughs> um we are CIA field agents, Mr. Black answers. We were sent here to find some scientific research, and all we found was this tracking device. He pulls out the tracking device out of his pocket. We waited, hoping to find out who it was that had the research. Once we realized that it was Snake, we had no other choice but to turn ourselves in. <laughs> Again, making it obvious. <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure I believe you, the leader says. I'll have you sent to base for interrogation. Although, to be fair, if this was the same guard Ooh. from the beginning, from the prologue, he would recognize Mr. Black. Well, yeah. That's true. He'd be like, that's the guy who freaking beat Dodged the crap all of our bullets. <laughs> Dodged all of our bullets. That's the guy who tricked us into thinking he was another man, like, even oh, though wow. we 
didn't the, even check for the ID. plan right here works out perfectly oh uh we just we're just gonna give up because you're here oh yeah we'll just take you right back to our base then <laughs> like I, obviously that's what they want you to do yeah what if the plan went completely wrong and they were like, you know what, let's just kill him. And then they just <laughs> shot him instead and like, crap. Well, I mean, you know, Mr. Black would just dodge all their bullets anyways. But... Dodge all their bullets and beat the yeah, crap out of Yeah, but can't dodge them. the bullets. No, but he would be able to tell if they're going to shoot him before it happens, though. Because he'd be able to read their mind and be like, that guy's about to shoot me. Can they have the eagle guy, not eagle, uh, scope. scope guy. He's probably pretty good with some guns. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like an expert, um, you know marksman or whatever um i'm not 100 percent sure i believe you the leader says i'll have you sent to base for interrogation <laughs> i don't believe you but you know, i'll fall right into your plan anyways the men take us outside of the football stadium and into a big helicopter designed to carry at least 20 people the real not question in- is where are the cops in all of this like um <laughs> too busy drink drinking coffee and eating donuts i don't know <laughs> i guess probably but I don't know. Well, I think they're just they just keeping everything secretive enough that the cops aren't noticing, I guess. I don't know. Maybe the cops have their own separate investigation, but they're not nearly as close in their investigation as they are, maybe. Yeah, but, like, didn't a lot had it happen at the stadium? Did anything break, blow up? Well, I think it, nobody was there. Yeah, I but... I, I don't mean, know. Somebody would notice. The, yeah. the stadium's right in the middle of the, the city. city. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, who knows? Um, the men take us There's outside. A big of, helicopter just landing right next to it. Yeah, football stadium into a big helicopter designed to carry at least twenty people, not including the pilot. They handcuff us as we begin to fly up in the air. Wait a minute, the leader says after looking at me and Abigail. Aren't you the one who escaped twice? And that's the boss's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with the CIA? <laughs> Land in this helicopter right now. Let's find out who these people really are and why they got caught on purpose. <laughs> uh, at least one of them wasn't a retard. Like, maybe it was, maybe it was Derek. Minute. Maybe it was Derek that figured it out. I don't know. I feel like Frank and Derek are both pretty dumb. I don't know. I feel like it'd have to be one of the other guys. Uh, True, but... <laughs> um, Mr. Black, Agent Scope, and Agent Eagle all look at each other and nod their heads. Next thing I know, Mr. Black wraps his handcuffs around one man's neck, strangling Ooh. him. As the other man, men try to get a good shot on Mr. Black, he pulls the man in the way so no one shoots. Mr. Black grabs the man's gun and starts shooting the other men. As Scope and Eagle punch the leader in the face, knocking him out. They both punch him in the face, boom, at the same time. Double punch. Knocking him out. Eagle grabs the handcuff keys and begins unlocking his hands. At this point, Mr. Black has already taken out all the men except for the pilot. <clears throat> wow. Once <laughs> I know. Once all of our handcuffs are unlocked, Scope points a gun at the pilot. Fly to the hovercraft, or I'll have my friend here shoot you, Mr. Black says. The pilot nervously opens the door to the cockpit and jumps out with a parachute. <laughs> Great, Scope says. We just lost our only way of finding the hovercraft. Now there's no way we can know where it is. Maybe there is, Eagle says as he climbs into the cockpit. Gotta have some tracking thing on it. How would the pilot know where it yeah, is? exactly. Well, that's yeah. what Eagle's thinking. They probably had no way of finding it either. There might be a tracking device on here that tells them exactly where it is. He looks around for a second. That was right. Now I know exactly where the hovercraft is. <clears throat> Good work, Eagle. Also, like, of course, the guy named Eagle is the, the pilot, you know. Why don't you just name him Goose? <laughs> Goose. <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. Oh, my gosh. To the danger zone. All right. um, good work, Eagle, Mr. Black says. Let's all put on these clothes. We have a little change of plan. Instead of being captured, we will go in disguise. And throw all these dead bodies overboard when you're done. <laughs> He's just look. taking a stroll down down the street with his dog and a <laughs> just a dead b- dude. Imagine like that's what gets finally gets the police involved. They're just sitting there in their car eating donuts and drinking dead coffee. Body dead body lands, lands, lands on the hood. Dead body. Dude, no, it's literally like, like Die Hard. It's like in Die Hard. Yeah. Dead body that lands, body on, the lands on the cop car. The cop car. He's like, what? Ah. Uh, Throw the dead bodies overboard when you're done. I want this to look as believable as possible. We all do exactly as we've been told. Phase one of the mission is complete. Nice. Wow. 
that I'm actually this is this that was a good chapter. That was that was some fun stuff, man. This mm-hmm. is entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> this book is like action packed. There's so much action in it. I know. Mm-hmm. It'd make for a great movie. Would, would actually let's make a movie. Yeah. Um, we'll, but we'll use this as the exact script. We won't deviate from this. Well, all. that's the only right way to make it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. All the exact dialogue, exact like description of things, everything, down to the bald guards and everything. And we are gonna make sure that every time it's those two guards, it's always Frank and Derek, same people every time. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't think that was inte- that was the way it was supposed to be when I wrote it, but that's the way it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um, chapter cha- chapter sixty seven. Zach. Thompson. <clears throat> we have the location of the hovercraft, a shadow agent says as he sits at a computer. Jameson, Steve, and I are in a helicopter, which is on the ground, waiting for takeoff. We are each wearing a custom-made costume. Mine is dark blue and covers my whole body, even a helmet covering my head and combat boots. The suit is designed to be able to change phase when I do. So, but like, what about the costume he had before? It didn't explain that, like... Yeah, well, you know... You know. <laughs> what, what? Maybe his clothes just fell off every time he sees <laughs> before. He's just naked and everything, but I never mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Change phase when I do. The helmet has a built-in computer that is voice activated. It has a tinted window so I can see while no one else can see my face. The whole costume is bulletproof. Jameson's looks just like mine, except it's dark gray, has no sleeves, no helmet, and a hood. Oh, his has a hood on it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> his is designed to withstand just about anything. Steve's also looks just like mine, except it's dark red, and the helmet looks different. It is a completely black helmet with a black visor that comes down over his eyes, leaving his nose and mouth uncovered. <clears throat> his has the same computer system as mine. Even though we already got descriptions of what these suits look like. Do we need them again? Yes. It's from a different character's perspective, but like still. His suit is designed to be extremely light, yet durable. Instead of boots, he has some of the best running shoes in the world. With this costume, he is able to run faster than the speed of sound without being launched through the air. Let's get going, I say to the pilot. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know what? Well, it did explain that in the when it when she like gave him the suit. She's like, "You'll be able to run supersonic speeds without creating a sonic boom or whatever." Well, that doesn't it. make any sense. I, I, I don't. Whatever. Know. Anyway, continue. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's it, it's a it's like a it's a superhero fantasy story. Um, I wonder how the others are doing. Wait, let us get going. I say to the pilot. The next thing we know, the helicopter is rising in the air. I wonder how the others are doing, Steve says to me. I hope that Abigail is okay. He has a concerned, worried look in his eyes. Why this sudden worry about Abigail, I ask. Do you like her? Because if you do, it's bringing on some tough competition. <laughs> Sweet home Alabama. It's be like Star Wars. Yes, yeah, Star Wars. No. Kiss my sister. No, it's not that, Steve says, shaking his head. She's my sister. What? I say in disbelief. <laughs> How can that be? Your last name is Richards. I know. I was changed when I was a baby. They didn't want Crepe to be able to find me. I would have been the next Crepe. They didn't want that. Who told you this? Crappy. I say, I say, still not sure if I should believe him. Fox told me. He told me my whole background. How they took me when I was a baby and placed me in the orphanage. Crepe has no idea that it's me. He has no idea that I'm still alive. Does Abigail know? No. She still thinks that she's an only child. Sounds a little bit like Star Wars to me. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just yes. said that. Dude. I say remembering the last time I saw the classic trilogy. Oh it's funny. Like, you know, like, I wear my influences on my sleeve so hard in these books. Like, I just I know. bring up, like, mm-hmm. oh, this is like... the. The this is like Star Wars. This is like the the Princess Bride. This is like <laughs> yeah. literally all the time. And the bad guy's long lost son comes back years later as his enemy. The story kind of starts the same way. Do you think it will end the same way? <gasps> I don't know. So far, it seems like there's no good in crepe. That's the same way it seemed with Darth Vader, I say, still referring to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Bunch of nerds. <laughs> Against uh, all odds, 
Luke still saw good in him. What? Dude, you could tell how much of a Star Wars nerd I am. Oh my gosh. It didn't matter what anybody else told him. He knew that his father was destined to bring balance to the Force. The question is, do you believe that your father still has good in him? And it's destined to bring balance to the Force. Destined to bring balance to the... Destined to stopping a communist. <laughs> Just as Steve so communism. <laughs> Just as Steve is about to answer that question, a man bursts through the door of the helicopter. It's Deathblade. What? Whoa. What? <laughs> he can fly. End of chapter. <laughs> yeah, surprise. Wait, I thought they got rid of Deathblade. I know. I guess. Well, I mean, they beat him last time without a struggle, so I think they probably could do it again. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, so Deathblade's back. <laughs> uh... Anyways, that was the end of that chapter. We have one more chapter for the day. So, that's exciting. So, again, he was handed over to the police. and you know, Yeah, the police in this place. Well, no, the part of the police force was actually controlled by Snake, so... Yeah. Frank and they and knew Dad that at the time, and they officers. still yeah. gave him to the police. Well, what else were they going to do with him? I don't know. Called CIA? I don't know. Yeah, they don't know how, how you could just call the CIA or you just dial up the CIA. Yeah, I'm sure in the the computer they had there was a number for CIA for Mr. Fox so, in there somewhere. Probably. But they didn't trust Mr. Fox either. So, That's true. At the time. Um chapter sixty eight. Jameson Thompson. I am stunned as I face Deathblade, the man whom we all thought was in prison. The one who was sent to kill us and almost succeeded. Is here to finish the job. Did he really almost succeed? I mean, yeah. I mean, he jabbed you in the in the skull a few times, but yeah, jabbed you with sides and arms and probably everywhere. Um, we took him once. We can take him again. I think. Still unsure of myself. I'm back. He says, "I'm back," like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I'll be I'll back. Back. <laughs> and this time I have learned from my mistakes and will not fail. Sure. He throws his weapon at the computer man, killing him. Oh, oh my. Poor guy. As the weapon flies through the air and lands in his hand again, I send a few punches at him, which he dodges, stabbing me in the side. Just as I begin to heal, I ram myself into him, knocking us both off the helicopter. Jameson! I hear Zach's a distant voice cry out. I am holding on to Deathblade as we fall. As I send punches to his face, he jabs me several more Wait, times. Wait, Deathblade can fly? Yeah, you don't remember that? He has, like, oh, yeah, rocket jetpack boots. Boot. Or yeah, whatever. Or, yeah, yeah, rocket boots or something. Yeah, and he's several times. Blood is gushing from my body, yet I don't feel pain because of all the adrenaline I have. This goes on for a while. Jabbing, punching, jabbing, punching. Jabbing, punching, jabbing, punching. No. Imagine I just keep going on like a whole paragraph. I have now lost way too much blood. I do have a healing power, but I don't think I'll ever recover from this much blood loss. You probably will, but okay. The Like, he literally has no reason to believe that he won't, because he has in the past. Every time. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Every time, time he's like, I don't know if I can take any more, he always is okay. <laughs> it's like this, th yeah, this time is different somehow. The only thing I wonder Doesn't is... Doesn't he, like, push himself away from this guy? What? Doesn't he just push himself away from this guy? They're falling through the air. Maybe he has a tight grip on him. I don't know. The only thing I wonder... Well, he probably doesn't want to let him go, because then he would just fly up and back. He's trying to, like, pull him down to the ground, I think. Yeah. Probably. The only thing I wonder is, can I survive this fall? I know that Deathblade can't, but can I? <laughs> I have never fallen from this high. I will find out soon, because we are almost to the ground. Just before we hit, Blade uses his rocket boots and stops falling as I slam to the ground. I black out. Wait, he didn't stay holding onto him? Come on. Well, he fell from a high distance. Of him. Am I dead? Did I have enough strength to survive the fall? If so, then Deathblade will reach the others. He will kill them too. <laughs> He's thinking, am I dead? Well, if you're thinking, you're probably not. Um... <laughs> I suddenly wake up. Everything is fuzzy for a second. But when I'm able to fully see, I notice that Deathblade is flying up. He is going back to take out the others. I must stop him. But how? 
I use all the strength I have in my legs and jump. I fly up in the air toward Deathblade. As I reach him, I grab onto his rocket boots and yank them off, sending us both oink. falling to the ground again. Just like, yoink. <laughs> yoink. These are mine now. He should have yoinked them off, put, put them on his on, feet, and, and flew, flew up. And, the light. <laughs> Bye. and then Deathblade just splat. <laughs> yeah. We both land at about the same time. We look up at each other. I charge him as fast as I can. He throws his weapon at me. The blades are spinning at an unbelievable speed. I duck as it flies over my head. I turn around, remembering how it always comes back to him. I watch it coming back when I suddenly get jabbed in the back by the other one. I think you forgot about that yet, too. <laughs> As I fall to the ground in pain, the other one slashes me in the face, blood flying everywhere. Ow. This movie would be rated R with all the blood and gore, like all the death and blood and everything. I'm now lying on the ground, unable to get up, as Deathblade stands above me. He begins jabbing me over and over again. I am beginning to black out. Oh my gosh. How again? Many times, how many times? Is this finally the end? Oh my gosh. <laughs> If so, I will accept it. I will have died saving the others, helping them finish their mission. Oh my gosh, which will end up saving the world from an army of mind-controlled superhumans. That is worth dying for. I will accept that death. I black out completely as the jabbing continues. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, anyways, end of chapter, end of the episode for now. Wow. <sighs> the 1800th time this book. I know. Will this be the end? Will I survive this? I black out. Twice <laughs> in one chapter. <laughs> and then jabbed over and over. Well, the problem is, like, I think I'm like, oh, I want to end a chapter on, like, a cliffhanger. Like, a, oh, will he survive? But, like, if you do that too many times, it's like, it, it's loses, not like, it loses its, like, oomph, you know? It's, yeah, it's not <laughs> it's like, like oh, what's going to happen again. anymore? You're like, oh, man, again. again. <laughs> now he's going to wake up and be fine, just like yeah. every time. Like, I get that. Well, I think that's the problem with having such short chapters. Because, like, in books, you know, it is nice when you end a chapter on a little bit of, like, a cliffhanger kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you have such short chapters, it's like you have to leave it on a cliffhanger, yeah. like, a lot. <laughs> that's true. Like, this this has 82 chapters. You have to leave it on a cliffhanger hanger 82, or 84, I think. 84 times. Or, well, not probably not because the last chapter wouldn't be left on a cliffhanger. Not obviously. all of them are cliffhangers. But, like, but still, it's are. just, like, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. But, anyways, <clears throat> that is the end for uh, this week. We are getting really getting down there. Only I think four episodes. We have left about yes, yeah, four episodes left. Four more weeks, uh, so about a month or so, and this podcast will be wrapped up. So um, yeah, that's really exciting. Um, at some point, we might do actually a sequel podcast potentially because I did actually try to rewrite this book once. I never finished, <laughs> but we might do that eventually as like a little side sequel mm -hmm. podcast for fun. Um, but for the main podcast, it'll be it'll be done in four more weeks. So definitely look forward to the, the rest of the climax here and uh yeah so anyways <clears throat> um that's about all for this week of the greatest book mm -hmm. never published there are a few different places you can listen to it you can listen to it on youtube or you can listen to it on um spotify um there's links in the description to both of those on depending on which platform you're already on and you can also see a link in the description to nathan's youtube channel which is called nathan mm -hmm. great and you can check that out um, and uh, Steven doesn't really have anything to check out uh, unless you want something to check out. Probably not. No. No. <laughs> Just this. Um, so yeah, that's about all for this mm -hmm. week. So definitely get excited for next week. Um, on Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time because that's when every new episode comes out. Anyways, thank you all for listening mm -hmm. slash watching. I've been Nim. I'm Nate. And I'm Steve. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.